Okay guys, today we're going to try and make some polar panoramas. Um, obviously we can't go out, your garden might be big enough to be able to take a 360 degree panorama. Um, but I've just got an image off, off Google. So this is the image I started with. Essentially if you just type in the skyline, and we want an image with a decent amount of, um, of sea or grass or sand. If it's as uniform as possible it tends to help and the same for sky okay so it's this one's pretty balanced and we can get this effect out of it because it is off Google we will have this issue where the the sea just doesn't quite look right when I get you to do this or normally when I get students to do this I get them to take a picture of the floor as well at a wide angle so you can try and patch that in after to just make it a little bit more realistic so uh, today we're just going to have um, this kind of effect with a skyline image off Google Images. I'll put the uh, one I've used in the attachment if you want to use the same one. But essentially this is what we're, we're going for. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening up my image in Photoshop. I'm going to do a few things first of all because it's not our image. And even if it was your image, we'd straighten up that skyline. So the horizon line or that center line is perfectly level okay this will help us align the polar panorama when it when Photoshop bends it around and puts it puts it back together so to do this I'm going to go into the crop tool and we have an option to straighten the little icon of a level so I'm going to click the level and I'm going to click and drag along that line and then Photoshop will straighten it for me. So this is pretty close anyway, I'm just going to press the tick. A good thing to do that first with your own images. Um, even if we're on a tripod, most of the time it, it's a little bit uneven. So straighten that up first, so we have a good base to work on. Then what we're going to do is, uh, actually what I'm going to do is, is take you through the process and just highlight an issue that sometimes occurs. So we're going to need this image to be perfectly square. But we want to stretch it out so that when we distort polar coordinates in a second, it brings it back into um, uh, something close to right. So what I'm going to do is go to image, image size, and I'm going to, uh, you'll probably have this checked originally, so I already unchecked that. So uncheck it by clicking the chain. This will allow us to set the height exactly the same as the width. So in this case it's 61.95 and you can see already it's going to stretch it so it's essentially making this into a square format and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so it's essentially upside down and I'm going to go to filter distort and polar coordinates this will give us a little preview if I zoom out a little bit uh, there's two options this is polar to rectangular or rectangular to polar we're going for this option rectangular to polar click OK and we get a version of a, a polar panoram panorama and the issue I wanted to point out is obviously this line going through the middle okay we essentially need to make both sides a similar if not the same gradient of color so that it blends together a little bit a little bit better than that does okay so um i'm gonna undo back to just the standard panorama and i'm going to duplicate it so i can either press command j or in windows so i think it's control j or click and drag your layer into the new layer icon okay i'm gonna flip this top image so I'm going to go to edit this time so it just affects that one layer so edit transform and I'm going to flip horizontally okay so now what I've got is both on top of each other there's the original and there's the flipped and what I'm going to go for you can see on the right side that that's a little bit darker than it is on the left so I'm going to use my gradient tool and a quick mask to copy that 
uh, left side to the right side essentially. So I'm going to add a quick mask. I'm going to get my gradient tool if I can. This thing's in the way. Hold on one second. Gradient tool. Okay, so you can. I did with the other one actually. I, I made a, uh, a marquee selection, especially for the uh, for the water. That was the easier one. Made the selection, then got the gradient tool, and then dragged it across. Oh, wrong way. So that's nice and easy then. Um, a nice gradient going from dark to light. And that should now match this side over here. The uh, the skyline, a little bit more uh, tricky. I could just do the marquee tool again, uh, which I think I did previously. And then just fix the issues after. So if I just click and drag again, it's got the skylight, but we've also got the uh, the images coming back in from the other side. So what I'm going to do is deselect. I'm going to get my paintbrush. I'm going to work on just removing those additional buildings uh, and see how that looks. So if your image is being put back in, we want to just swap our foreground and background color because we're working on a quick mask. I'm going to rub that out. That doesn't look too bad actually. Um, if you see any lighter or darker patches, I can just see it's slightly darker because of the sky before. So I'm just gonna go to my uh, dodge and burn tools. Uh, I've got the dodge and I'm just going to line that up just a touch. So it's not as visible. Okay. Now once we've done that, we can merge them, going up to layer and merge visible, or command shift E, or control shift E. And then we're back to the position we were before, but this time it should match up a little bit better. Okay, so let's go through those steps again. We're going to go to image, image size, Make sure that the link is unchecked. Make the width the same as the height, 61.95. We're gonna rotate. Hundred and eighty degrees. And we're gonna go back into filter, distort and polar coordinates. Photoshop does remember the last filter you put on, so it will be up at the top if you want to just click that. Okay, so now this time we have got rid of um, that that line all the way through and it's done a pretty good job of it actually. You might have to go in and clean up a few things so you can see we've just got some images duplicated there which I didn't take out um, from the last one, so I, I don't... I'd step back and just make sure I do that a little bit better. And then on the last one that I did, the preview, this one, the, um, the background didn't come out as smooth as it has um, on this one. So you can see just at the top here, uh, we've got these lines where it's just Photoshop is just trying to make up whatever data that was. So to correct that, what I did was uh, erase the bit I didn't want. So E, go to the eraser. Make sure you've got your hardness right down and it's a decent sized brush. Unlock your layer so we have nothing behind it. And rub out a, a kind of uniform amount so that it kind of feathers into the same color all the way around your polar panorama. Careful not to get the top of that building. 
here. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And with the paint bucket, I'm going to color pick the darker shade of blue on here. So I'm going to press Option to get the color picker up. And I'm going to click over here on the right layer, sorry. And then paint it onto the new layer. Okay. Drop it behind the image we've got. And you can then determine whether that's uh, too light, too dark, if you need to go back in and erase some more of the one before. So I can still see that darker blue. So maybe I, I, I could go back with the paint bucket, pick a darker blue, paint it and see how that blends. Or I could get the eraser tool again and just try and feather out those bits that, oops, sorry, wrong layer. Feather out those bits that don't look correct. You could also make a, a, a radial gradient as a background as opposed to just one block color. So just to try and match it. So if you go back to your gradient tool, you have radial up on the top instead of linear that we've been using. And then Click on our colors. Let's go back to this. Click on the colors we've got and try and color pick maybe a lighter version of that. Press OK. So now we've got a gradient that goes from this lighter blue to a slightly darker blue. Make a new layer. Pull that gradient out from the center. Let's see which way it's coming around. Oh, it's doing it the wrong way around. If it does it the uh, the wrong way around, double click. Just swap them around on your gradient and then try that again. So from the center out, then put your polar panorama back in, and that might blend. A little bit better. If you use your foreground and background colors here, it'll probably be a little bit easier for you if that's the case. So I'm going to click on foreground color first, which in my case is black. I'm going to choose the lighter blue. Click OK. I'm going to swap the two colors around. So I'm now on the background color. The background color has become the foreground color. Click it again. I'm going to choose a darker color. And click OK. Now when I'm on my gradient tool and it's the first option, the first option is the two foreground and background colors that you've used. So by clicking these little arrows here, it'll swap it around. Okay. Um, I've picked two colors that are too close, so give me one second. Okay, so that can see a little better at the top here. It goes from yellow to blue. If I just swap these around, it now goes from blue to yellow. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense, keeping the two colors in the foreground and background colors first. The gradient tool, the first option is always the foreground and background colors. So whichever option works for you, whether it's just the uh, the paint bucket, I think in this option, I think the paint bucket worked better. Um, we may even be making our polar panorama bigger so you might not see as much of that background as is available anyway. Okay, so there's two options for your background. You may have to go in and stamp tool out some sections. So if there's some of your lines still in, you might have to go and stamp that out. Um, you could lighten some areas in the original image. So you've got this kind of dark shadow in the middle. I could try and dodge that now. We'll go back to the original and just, um, just correct it before I even started. Okay, so that's with the dodge tool, 100%, so you can see uh, see it doing it. Uh, and that's just lighting it up a little bit to get rid of that shadow. Like I say, if you were doing this with your own images, you could take a picture of the floor and copy that in in post. So it would be an extra kind of option for this point would be to fix that bit in the middle. 
Okay, so if you are if you have a, a giant garden, I'm extremely jealous, but you could do a little polar panorama there, do a 360 degree panorama and see how that blends together. Doesn't necessarily have to be a full 360. I don't think this original image was. Um, obviously it's just a skyline, so you can get away with just doing a panorama, just make sure there's a clear start and end that would likely join together uh, without with minimal work in Photoshop. Make sure there's a decent amount of space at the bottom and the top for us to work with. As you saw, Photoshop will stretch the top few pixels, so you don't want any information in that ideally. So you want a clear sky, skyline. Um, other than that, see if you can find some interesting skylines to use. Have a play around with uh, this technique. Have a little experiment. Edit with some images you find on Google. As well, if you've taken panoramas in the past and you've got some, try and use those if you wish. And we'll forgive you for that little bit in the middle where we can't do much about that at the moment. Okay. See how you get on and ask me any questions if you've got any. Thanks guys. We'll also mention that you might not have a very smooth sky like this. So you might have to get creative with the stamp tool and, and clone back in some areas or duplicate some areas or select an area, stretch it and then, and then crop it maybe. So you may have a trickier time with some of yours if you've got like a really textured sky. Um, but try your best to kind of stamp tool that out. And uh, yeah, go from there. Um, looking forward to seeing your polar panoramas. Oh, and I did try some single images that were kind of set up in the same way where you had a uh, big enough piece of uh, grass building and then nice bit of sky but because it was just one image when i put it into a polar panorama everything was really skewed really stretched so unless you've got kind of a smallish panorama might work but a single image is looking a bit too skewed but i thought i'd try just in case you guys had any images that would suit so it doesn't necessarily have to be a 360 degree just a long enough panorama that the buildings don't look really skewed